Hey guys, we're live here inside the group. It's me, Muhammad Ali, here with uh, Spencer Foreman, who is the founder of Launch Flows. And today we're going to have a walkthrough, you know, of, of, <laughs> of the product, you know, from start to the end. So if you have any questions, this is the best time to ask. So um, let me see. So before we go ahead, I will I'd like to see if anybody's here, first of all, and second, if the audio is great on our end so that... Hello, hello, hello. Testing. Yeah. One, two, three. Let me see if anybody's here. Uh, I'm just going to check this on the mobile phone as well to see if... Uh, yeah, I see people joining. Right. It's There's early quite a few people signed up, so... Yeah, on the event notification. So definitely, this is uh, this should come naturally. Okay, so yeah, I see people coming. Great. If the audio is good, guys, let's know so we can go ahead and get to, the, get to work. You know, I'm going to pin this at the top of the page. So if anybody comes into the group, they can see this for themselves. <laughs> I'm sure they'll catch up. Got to do some work. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, let's get started, you know, and, and then I think we're good to go, right? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be looking at myself on the screen. I'm going to share the screen mostly because today the purpose is to give a live, like literally from scratch example of how you would best use most of the launch flows features. And I want to preface this by saying anybody who watches this replay, I love that people have ideas on new things, and there's a couple page builders that just cause me a little indigestion. So I'm gonna to refer to those at the end if we have time, particularly oxygen. Uh, and the reason is because, as you'll see, it's so easy to use launch flows, but certain page builders don't follow the same practices or best practices that most everything else does. So it's kind of like this large pack of people, a niche of people keep asking about using oxygen in particular. And there is a way to do it, but because Oxygen is so odd in the way it executes against the normal WordPress practices, I'm left with this sort of, ugh, how, how do I satisfy these people? So I've come up with some kind of a compromise, but I do appreciate everybody who's asking. It's legitimate, but it's, it's kind of like saying you're in America driving on the right side of the road and somebody says, I got this really cool car that drives backwards on the other side of the highway. Can you show me how to use it? And I'm like, yeah, maybe, but that's besides my main point. So let me get going with this. And we'll talk about oxygen at the end. Uh, Brizzy is still sort of a wild card. It probably works the same way. Okay, so I believe you should be seeing Muhammad the, the screen here, if you could please confirm yeah. for me. Right. Yeah, okay. All right, so I wanna just also point out to people that if you were to start out at launchflows.com, you can take advantage of a couple things. First of all, we absolutely love when you use for free this free demo. So this is your own private multi-site launch pad for your own individual copy of launch flows with all the plugins you'll need to do what you want. Please take advantage of it. You can use it for, I think, seven days and then it resets. Um, if you have problems with the email, just use a different email. It does not send you an email because we don't want this to turn into some kind of spam engine for hackers. So it just, get you into the site, start using the site, have a go at it, have fun. Plus we have a 30 day return policy, no questions asked. So when you combine the price of this deal, along with the free trial, along with 30 day no questions asked, my goodness, you know, what do you, what else do you need, right? Now, the documentation is also something I encourage everybody to use. Use the quick start guide. I'm gonna show you most of this here, but then the core features are in this column and then we've got these sort of lists of random how to do things that are popular. So if you just start with a quick start guide, you should be able to do what we're gonna show you in this hour, almost everything you want within minutes. It's just that simple, right? Um, I wanna point out, we have some deep integration for things like WP Fusion and WP Forms, but it's not necessary in most cases because WP, uh, sorry, uh, Launch Flows works with everything that works with WooCommerce. So in other words, if you have a theme, a plugin, a, a function, a snippet, anything, as long as it works with WooCommerce, we found almost nothing that won't work with launch flows, as you'll see, because launch flows primary purpose, and it does require WooCommerce, is to modify and improve the behavior out of the box of WooCommerce and turn it into a sales funnel tool for all the various things you need, okay? Finally, there are a roadmap, 
of everything that has been asked of me the last 18 months that we've done. So if you have new ideas, feel free, go on in there and add more. And that's it. Okay. So let's get started. I have a sandbox site here. Number one thing I want to recommend to people is that when you're doing a sales funnel site, you're going to need WooCommerce installed and set up. Now, Muhammad ran into some problems with this because, again, he just started using it. You must finish the basic setups of WooCommerce no matter what you do. And here's a couple quick tips. Number one is in WooCommerce, there will be some key pages that must be set up. Even if you don't need them or want them, they need to be there for WooCommerce. Number one is you need to have a default checkout page. You need to have a My Account page. And it's a good idea to have a cart page, even though you may not use it. And you'll find that these will show up in various locations. So for example, under accounts and privacy, if you set up WooCommerce, actually I take it back, under advanced, if you set up WooCommerce, you will need to designate what was the I, you know, the page that was the cart. What is, for example, my default checkout page? And the reason that this is important is that's how WooCommerce's functions operate without getting hung up. Some of their functions will be looking for these things, even if you're not going to use them. So you must have these three things at least set up by default with WooCommerce. Nothing to do with literally launch flows at all. A cart page, a checkout page, and my account. Now, there's also a few options, and that's in the accounts and privacy. In almost all circumstances, to benefit from sales funnels, you do not <laughs> want people to do guest checkouts. Now, there are a few exceptions, and you can allow guest checkouts, but just think of it this way. If somebody came into your real-world store and you allowed them to leave without telling who they were, <laughs> you'd be missing the best opportunity of somebody coming into your store, right? So by making it a requirement that somebody gives you their email, registers, logs in at the checkout as a user not just as a customer, you get their information and presumably you'll take advantage of plugins like WP Fusion or other CRMs like Fluent CRM so that you now can follow up with the people and do some incredible stuff either after your sales funnel or even in the process of your ongoing sales funnel. So to set that up, you wanna make sure to allow customers to log in, but do not have this checkbox checked. Also do not check this box where they can create an account on the My Account page because by the time they get to the My Account page, they'll already have had a registration and a login. So just follow this pattern. Check the bottom of the guest checkout, not the top, and make sure that the second box is unchecked here, okay? Now, let's talk about the basics of launch flows. Uh, like we talk about, there's only three things necessary to get the best benefit of launch flows. A product, a checkout page, and a thank you page. Now, thanks to a couple suggestions, you can even think about the next steps as being another product. So a concept of daisy chaining is really important here. Let's talk about the products. Unlike other sales funnel plugins, I made the conscious choice, having already worked with cart flows and some of the other ones, to make launch flows something that accessorizes or improves what's already in existence of WooCommerce. And that is that you can create any kind of a product you want. It could be a simple product, which is a one-time sale, a subscription, it could be a variable or a variable subscription. It could be grouped. Any type of WooCommerce product will work. Here I have made a, the beginnings of a test product that I'll show you in order to demonstrate some of those oxygen problems. You'll notice that I've also got oxygen here. And I might get this out of the way in a second by turning off the plugin, but let's just start with it here. When you create a product, you can call it anything you want. But one of the neat things about launch flows is that you could create a custom URL string and then actually make the product itself into a sales page, which is really incredible. You don't need to make extra sales pages or use extra sales pages from other things. You can just take advantage of the fact that I'm already making a product. It's already got a post. Why not just turn that into its own sales page? But more importantly, when you set up the product itself, choose what type of product it would be. So here's a simple product, here's a simple subscription. The difference is how often you are going to charge somebody. Obviously a subscription, you could charge $25 every month or week or year. And in doing so, you don't have to ask them for the money again, it'll just charge them. And you can also go ahead and do other things like a variable subscription. 
That means that you can create attributes like payment plan. So it could be a variable product that charges multiple times, but one choice is monthly, another choice is every six months, and another choice is once every year. Either way, it's the same subscription product, but you just change the term. So for example, I could create a term here, term, and I could say monthly, my annually or annually. And in doing so, I can use these for the three variations. So I've got a WooCommerce subscription product that has a term length. And then in my variations, I go ahead and just say, generate all three of those product IDs. And again, this has nothing to do with launch flows, but just showing you that this is the basis for what launch flows can take advantage of. So now I've got three variations from one product which essentially gives me three choices, right? I got a monthly option, a semi-annual or an annual. And notice they have unique ID numbers. These product ID numbers are what LaunchFlows takes advantage of. And I'll show you that in a second. But let's keep this super simple for now. We're gonna just do a simple product that's virtual, $25 a month. Any of the other things you wanna set up are fine. But let's look at the LaunchFlows tab where there is DNA that we can program in. You can select where does this person get taken after they add this product to the cart. And by the way, they will not be taken to the cart. They will be taken to wherever you tell them to be taken, which is one of the benefits of launch flows. It avoids the need like normal WooCommerce to put something in a cart and either leave somebody on that shop page or product page or take them to the cart. Nobody wants that in a sales funnel. With a sales funnel, you want them to go from A to B to C to D the way you tell them to. So here you can choose from the drop down where you want them to go. Now this could be a product page, like if you want to daisy chain one product to the next, or it could be the checkout, like the oxygen checkout page that I created, okay? So I've got a product. If I were to add this to the cart through any means I want, either in the shop, the product page, or what I'll show you in a second, the launch flows direct checkout link. The person will have this product in the cart ready for checkout, but will also be directed to this next step, which in this case is my custom checkout page or my special checkout page. I also have another option I can set, which is what happens after they buy this product. So let's say this is the only product in the actual checkout. When they're done, where do I want them to go? And typically I would take them to a global thank you page, or I would take them to a custom thank you page. But what if instead you'd rather just take them right to their My Account area? That's awesome too. Take them to the My Account page, which is right here. And that way they buy the product and they're immediately taken to the dashboard where you can have some custom information that says, hey Spence, thanks for buying. And here's what you should do next. Either way, this is the next step right after they add it to the cart this is the next step after this product is actually purchased. Now, what happens if you have two products in the cart and they both have different settings for what happens after checkout? That's where the WooCommerce settings has a default tiebreaker. So if you go into WooCommerce, when you're setting it up, we're back into WooCommerce settings here. Under general, this is where Muhammad had some issues, I think, in his video the other day. There's a default thank you page. I highly recommend you choose the default or global thank you that you make with the widgets and not, so that this is the tiebreaker. If you ever have two or three or more products bought in one purchase that have different after checkout steps in them, because this way it'll go to the default place and everything will act as you expect. It's sort of like, Use the rule of thumb. If you're checking out one product at a time, their own next checkout step or post checkout step rules. Otherwise, the default here is what goes, all right? Same thing is true, by the way, with the checkout. Remember I told you you need to have a default checkout page set for WooCommerce. Same idea. If you have two products that are different custom checkout pages, but you buy them together in some way. Maybe you do a instant bundle. You wanna make sure that the default checkout page is here because that is what will rule to break the tie. It'll just go to your default checkout page instead.
Okay, so now let's talk about some basics. We've got this product, I've added an image to it. There are some other custom things I could add into the DNA. For right now, by the way, I'm not going to do a custom uh, after checkout page, I'll just leave that to the default. And I am going to have the oxygen checkout page, the custom one, be where I send this product to. Now, we're not gonna use this here, but if you wanted to just quickly register somebody, there's a special function called the instant registration. This wouldn't be useful for a paid product, but as I'll show you, it's a great way to make a free product that acts as a gorgeous custom registration process without the need for extra plugins. The next step is actually one that would be useful here. Solo checkout. This is definitely where I saw Muhammad had an issue because maybe it wasn't obvious. If you have two or three products you're offering in a sequence and you wanna make sure that the second product or the first product is an either or choice. Okay, so main right. product offered, they say yes or no. Let's say they say yes. If they get offered after that a second product and you wanna make sure that it's either the first product or make sure that the second product is set up as a solo checkout. Why? Because by checking that option, that product can only be by itself in the checkout and it will kick out everything else. So don't use that if you wanna have what's called an order bump where you're adding a second product to the first but definitely use that if you have a daisy chain sequence of offers and you wanna make sure that whichever one you know, should rule kicks out the other ones, make it a solo checkout. Okay, instant sales page. This is what I was referring to where, hey, you know what? I've already got a URL that I can customize for this product. Why not make it into its own custom sales page? If I use this option, you get rid of all of the default WooCommerce junk and you can use Elementor, or Gutenberg or whatever to build a custom sales page where you link to this product and it, you know, it's just a, why not use the same page URL for one thing kind of an option. We'll talk about that maybe if we have time at the end. Instant branding, I won't worry about that here. That's a great play if you've got a scenario where you're offering products and you have a partner because that allows you to have a placeholder product that puts the partner's logo and name and other information at the top of your checkout page. So think of it like an instant way to give your affiliates their own custom uh, sales page. Just make a placeholder product for your affiliate or your partner, put their brand in as the featured image, and then as long as that product is the first product always on the page, which you can use launch flows to do, it looks like their own custom sales page. And it's a really, really handy tool. Uh, hide the free price is useful if you have, uh, let's say, add 10 products for one price to the cart. For any of those products, you can hide their price. In fact, let me show you how this works here. Um, like we have a bundle option. So let's say you've got something where you can go, um, I'm going to add fruit into a basket, right? I'm going to do four of your favorite fruits for $18. Watch what happens when I add berry bonanza. Instead of it saying $0, you can customize it and it just says included, Apricot Madness. By choosing that option for any of the accessory products that can be added into a, you know, a multi-cart, uh, sorry, a multi-product offer, you just don't get this weird 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 stuff. It's just an elegant way to do uh, the pricing. Only one variation, this will come up today. This would be if you have a variable product like we just talked about, like monthly, six months, once a year, or a subscription variable product, where you want it to be that the choices that are available on the order bump widget are only one or the other. You can't choose any uh, two or three of them at once. Let me say that again. Normally with a variable product in WooCommerce, you can actually choose more than one variation and add it to the same checkout. If you use this option here, you make it that it's either one or the other or the other. And that's an actual really cool tool when we use our order bump widget, because by putting the product variables in, you can make this on checkout, you know, choose A or B or C, but make it that they only get one or the other or the other. Kind of works the same way as the thing I mentioned with solo checkout, but solo checkout's effective when you have a simple product, goes to a second simple product, goes to a third simple product, Whereas the only one variation works 
when you've got just one product with multiple choices to make sure it's only one of those at a time. And then force thank you, this is something that will override that thing I just told you about. Remember I said that if you had two products and they had different custom thank you pages, that the global default behavior would be to show the you know default thank you page? Well, guess what? We put in a safety valve for that. If you really insist on one product always winning, make sure only one of your products at a time has got this option checked, and then that will be the product that wins. If you choose two products at the same checkout with that option on, you're right back to square one. But it's a really neat way to force like one of your products to have the custom thank you. And I think this works really well like at the end of a daisy chain or something like that. Okay, so let's not worry about these for now. Let's stick with the simple principles of I've got a product, I programmed in all the DNA just at the product. Notice I didn't have a custom post type for flows or steps, and I didn't have to go through a custom dashboard, and I didn't have to do anything else. I just am making the same product that I already make in WooCommerce. When I click update, in the upper right corner is probably the most important thing you're gonna need. That is the direct checkout link. This is the magical link that you can use anywhere on the internet. Facebook, Instagram, outside link sources. You can use it in your own sales pages on your website. This will take this product and send it to the place where you designated here and do any of the things that you designated here. So let's see what happens. If we just paste it in, this will take this product and send it to a custom checkout page, which by the way, and I say custom checkout page, there's nothing customized about this yet. It's just a default WooCommerce page, but it's under the control of launch flows, which makes this super powerful. Here's why. Do you notice here, I'm trying to emulate what was done by uh, Muhammad. Do you notice here we've got an order bump widget displaying this product so that if I wanted to, I could give the person one or more of these choices, and they have the option on the actual checkout page of doing something that you cannot do in WooCommerce. See how I have the ability to add and remove? Now I can do as many products as I want here, either multiple simple products, or I can do one variable with lots of choices. But what I wanna point out is how did I set this up? So this is the second part of the three simple steps, right? Got a product, now we just need a checkout page. Any default WooCommerce checkout page will work, even if it's not launch flows. But to get the benefit of doing all the special launch flow stuff, we want to make sure that it is a launch flows checkout page. And here's how. Simply go into your default editor, which could be Classic or Gutenberg. I happen to have Classic here. That's fine. And what we want to do is go into the Page Attributes box on the right-hand side. Now in Gutenberg, it'll be in the same place, but it'll be just hidden in a bunch of tabs. Page attributes is global WooCommerce behavior. It will always be there. Choose the page attribute template for either launch flows canvas or launch flows full width. And this is only necessary when you are on a checkout page. This isn't necessary for order bump pages or upsell pages or thank you pages or anything else with launch flows, just the checkout. And here's why. This eliminates the need to add the separate short code for WooCommerce checkout. And it adds the special code from launch flows that allows you to, if you want, do all these magic tricks, like adding in you know, order review, adding in order bumps, and so forth. And this is what is the difficulty, which I'll get to maybe with Oxygen and Brizzy, is that they're not honoring this out of the box. And that's not correct in my mind. I'm not arguing that they're not good for what they do, but the fact is that this is the default editor. This is the default behavior of WordPress. A page builder that doesn't honor this is sort of like saying, hey, I'm ignoring that you're a WordPress plugin and I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna do it a different way. But for our case, canvas means there's no header or footer, just a blank canvas. Full width will show the header or footer of either your theme or your page builder, really easy. So I'm gonna choose launch flows full width, so it's a checkout. Now you'll also notice that even though I did not do any customizing of the layout yet, I did show that order bump, and that was just using the short code. So when I remove the short code, you'll notice that this page is otherwise 
just a standard WooCommerce checkout page. There's nothing about this that's different. The only exception to that would be, I will show you in a second how I got rid of all the extra checkout fields because this is a virtual product. But otherwise, when I add back in the launch flow short code, if I'm working in short codes, by the way, rather than with widget, I simply choose the one I need, like LF bump, and then I said product ID is one, two, three, four, or whatever. In this case, I had the product ID that we were just working on. So if I go up here, I see the product ID is 48297, right? So I just use the short code, 48297. So with any editor, page builder, or whatever that honors short codes, that's as easy as it is without adding the extra parameters to put the order bump into place. So this gives me a particular product that shows up at the top, ready to be used. Now, let me give you an example. I'll borrow some other products just to show you how you could stack multiple things. Because this is very handy for a one-page checkout. Um, let's do this one, 47345, right? So as simple as 47435, four, I think, right? Okay. 47345. So I'll copy this. Four, seven, three, four, five. I'm not necessarily sure whether that product is set up yet for this checkout, but I just want to demonstrate how this will now display two possible options that can both be added to the checkout. And all the parameters for styling it and so forth are in the documentation. So, so now so, I could add. So quick question. Quick yeah. question. Rather than put up at the top, is there any way to put it near above the credit card area? Most Say that again, sorry, I couldn't hear you. you. Know, and rather than put at the top, because yes, can you put it below where it says total? Yes, when you the way you can put it somewhere else is when you start to rearrange the checkout order. So yeah. the, the best way to think of it is like this. Here, let's say at the bottom is all the default WooCommerce right. checkout components. Mm -hmm. Okay, think of it like in the old days, you would have like a newspaper that you want to clip coupons. You would take an exacto knife or something you would cut out a coupon and you you know you could take it out or hide it or remove it or reorganize it so by taking the default woocommerce checkout what launch flows does is essentially snips out each of those key components into its own container and with jquery allows you to re relocate them and organize them right for the most part to get advantage of that i would recommend that you use free elementor or gutenberg because in doing so, when you put the short codes into their containers, you now get the option of, of course, having multiple columns. So let's just do that right here with, let's go into Elementor for the sake of argument because it's the most flexible. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to relocate stuff, you don't have to actually customize everything, but what you can do is put in a layout. So I think the two column layout is very popular. Let's do a couple things. Let's go over here to our widgets which again, free Elementor, not paid. And Elementor can work inside of Oxygen or one of these other ones by simply using it as the, the component for this purpose. So right. now if you type launch flows, I've got this entire array of all the pieces, right? The billing section, the review section, the shipping section. So what I typically will do, we'll just drag these out and put them where I want. And I do this one time because then I can save it. And in future reference, I don't have to actually redo this every time. I just literally, you know, put it where I want it and then use that uh, saved section. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm just essentially like taking those cutout pieces and I'm putting them where I want it. Let's put the coupon between here and here. And let's also go ahead and put in the login so that if somebody's having a problem with logging in, you know, cause they're already a customer, WooCommerce will recognize their email. And finally, let's put in the um, notices section, which will tell you if you've forgotten to fill out a field. So maybe these five components, and maybe what I'll do too is in case, because I'll show you how this works, I'll put in the additional field box, even though we're not using it right now. Okay, so now what I've done is I've put this where I want it. Well, okay, great. Now let's put those order bumps somewhere else. Cool, where do I want to put them? I don't know. Let's put them down here. Yeah, there, yeah. Okay. Now, am I going to use the short codes in Elementor? No way. I'm going to use the widgets. Much easier, right? So if I type launch flows 
and then I type order bump or I search it out. Let's use the widget instead because this gives me some extra controls. So here's the widget and I just borrow the ID of the product, right? So we had uh, 48297 is the product. Notice it shows up and now I've got some cool styling controls which makes this a hell of a lot easier. The image, I want that image to be crazy big, you know, and so forth. Everybody knows how these widgets work. Mm -hmm. You can do the same stuff with short codes or with the wrapper if you're using Gutenberg or whatever. I'm just saying by using free Elementor, you get all this great control right inside of the layout. So like, why, why make it hard for yourself, right? All right. So let's get rid of the short codes. Uh, let me scroll up so I can see what I'm doing there. Let's move this over and then delete this for a second. And now let's take a look at our layout. So all I've done is I've switched to using Elementor. I moved the order bump component or whatever else I was using. And let's also, we can get rid of this. Okay, and let's save this. I, I wanna get rid of that. Okay, let's save this. And now let's take a look at our layout. And you'll notice now our order bump is down here. Now, one of the things I like to do with order bumps always is I like to use the advanced style capabilities because you know these, these always have like a border on them, right? They always have that crazy, pay attention to me. So right. I do like five and then I make it red and it's like, maybe dashed instead, you know? And then I can also use the widget, like I said, to add a custom title. But wait, you know, there's more. So, and maybe I'm gonna put some padding in here. So I'll probably put like a 5% padding in. So again, Use the Gutenberg, use the Elementor, use whatever you want. But like, my gosh, if you just use free Elementor, what I'm showing you here, how long did that take me to set up? Like two seconds? Now, let me explain why there's no billing address fields here. When you set up WooCommerce, there's a couple of free products that would be very helpful for everybody to consider using. Here I'm using a free product called the Checkout Field Manager plugin. And that gives us this ability here. When you go now to WooCommerce, the checkout fields, of which there's three types, billing, shipping, and additional, can be customized. Watch what happens when I uh, go over here and I restore the billing fields to the default from WooCommerce. When I do that and save it, I'm going to be showing all this extra junk that is irrelevant to a buyer of a virtual product, right? Who needs to give their address, city, state, phone, blah, 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 to buy a digital product? So by using this free plugin, and here's what it is, the checkout field manager for WooCommerce in the repository. Okay. This gives you the ability to do exactly what I'm showing you. And guess what? The reason I didn't include this inside of LaunchFlows, like CartFlows has its own custom version of this, is because this plugin is killing it. The author of this is Theme High. Look at it, it's five stars, 318 rooms. They've got this figured out. Why would I bloat my plugin when this is already available for free? So I simply go into the checkout fields editor. I click all fields. Then I uncheck first name, last name, email. And then I remove all the other ones. I click save changes. And then what I like to do is I like to drag the email to the top. Because that way, if you're using something like abandoned cart, it's going to be the first thing people give you. And now when I restore the page and refresh it, you'll see I'm back to the kind of thing you want to see for a digital checkout. Now let's talk about this additional options. Remember that I put in place the additional options uh, widget so I can move this wherever I want. For example, maybe I want to use the thing and I'm going to put it to the top right. In which case I can use this for some extra, you know, info about the person. It's a free ride. What do you mean? Well, if I go back to the checkout field editor and go to additional fields, I can now collect some user metadata, right? So let's add a new field that says text, additional color. And I say, you know, what's your favorite color? And I can put in, if I want, a drop down of choices. But in this case, I'll just let them type it. 
I say it's required, I save and close. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide or do what I did before on the normal order comments, but now I've got this custom field and I've got it where I want it. So if you're the type of a uh, sales company that needs to get more information about your buyer, guess what? Couldn't be easier with launch flows because now you can just use these three components that you've already got. And if you want, you can do the same kind of thing. You know, maybe I'll put it back down here and maybe I'll customize the widget and I'll put some attention on it. Like um, you can do like crazy motion effects, you know, or let's see here. I don't know. There, there was some animation motion effects here, you know, you could do, you know, crazy, like it, it goes and it, uh, you know, pops back and forth, fades in and out, or maybe you just do the same thing with a border, right? Maybe just make this a big uh, solid border to get some attention. I, I don't think you're going to do this, but you get the idea. Okay. So now I've got full control over the layout. I've also been able to customize exactly what kind of information I get. Now, if somebody buys this or adds other products, remember we said you customize where they go after checkout. And remember at the last point when I set up the product, I just used the default thank you page, which should look like this. Let's see what's there. Thank you. Let's see what I got in place. Uh, let me actually go look and see what page I've got. So let's go look. At the, let's look at the thank you page before we send them there. So if I type in thank you, it's just an ordinary page. It could be a post or a lesson or anything I want. So let's take a look at this first in classic and see what it looks like. All right, I've already got it with Elementor. And again, it could be a regular page. It doesn't have to use Elementor. This could use any page builder. Um, we can put in the widget. Let's go, let's go back actually and just use the standard WordPress editor. Make it easy, okay. So let me let me first clear all this out. Okay, if I just put in the standard editor, you know, thank you, and I save it, the page will look silly, but you get the idea. It's essentially just a blank page with thank you on it, right? Oh, hold on, one other thing we got to do. Let, let's do this. It's a thank dash you. Let's let's make a new page. Let's make a custom thank you, so I won't have to bother with the called thanks. Okay. So I'm going to say thanks and I'll just put the words on. Oh, and one other thing I need to do, I'm going to talk about oxygen now because this is, this is the kind of thing that's making me nuts. Oxygen is what's redirecting the content of this page. So let me, let me kill this oxygen question and then go back. Oxygen gets its business into every page post everywhere. It injects itself into everything by default. And the only way to get rid of it, if you want to use Oxygen, is with this free plugin or similar called the Free Soul Deactivate Plugins. So if instead of using Elementor or Gutenberg or Divi or Beaver Builder or Thrive or anything else, you want to use Oxygen, please do yourself a favor and install at least something like this plugin. Because what this allows you to do is prevent Oxygen from sticking its nose into every single page and post's business, which is what it's doing now and trying to put its own content in. And there you can now selectively disable oxygen entirely from this page. So now it'll act like a regular WooCommerce or WordPress page. And if I say, thank you, even without anything else on it, we will get expected behavior. Now I'm using Astra as the theme. If I want, I can stylize this page using any of the, you know, Astra options and so on and so forth, or I can use, you know, Elementor, Canvas, wh whatever I really want to use, it's easy. But I'm just going to use Elementor because this is a really simple way to show how a custom thank you page could work. So let's say I'm going to make the thank you page to just have two components. What did you just buy? As well as some visual elements, right? So I'll get rid of this thing I started with. And I actually like to use one of these free templates. You showed yours from Envato. Yeah. There's got to be 8 billion free add-ons for Elementor that you can use as the starting point, right? Mm -hmm. So I can pick any of these blocks or these entire whole pages. Uh, in this case, I don't have it installed, but like any of these whole pages as a component for turning into a thank you page, right? So 
let's see if we find something attractive here and I'll just show you how quick I can do this. Um, this, this guy's actually pretty good. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of quirky word. So I'm gonna put this in place and all I need to do is add one widget from launch flows, the thank you widget. Everything else is just, if I wanna do dynamic content and so on and so forth. Now, I wanna also point out, remember I said that we're only right now using the free version of Elementor, costs nothing. If we were to turn on the paid version, the pro version, we would get all those cool templates that were currently turned off and we would get some other dynamic content control. So I'm gonna do that right now. Just, I gotta imagine everybody in your audience has Elementor Pro anyway. I mean, my God, right. if you don't get it. So let's go back over here to this page because now this is gonna give me some cool options and I'll show you why. First of all, just for the sake of argument, if I were to go back and try to now re-add those, you know, instead of just the, um, you know, the blocks or whatever, I have all these extra components that are just, you know, give me a break. There's like a thousand different things just out of the box with Elementor alone. But here's the other cool thing. Let's change this into a thank you page. So what I'm gonna do is take this title and I'm gonna use the dynamic capability of Elementor Pro, right? So when I click on this element, I'm gonna use this little dynamic tag option. Um, hold on one second. I may have to register my pro license that I just turned it on. Let me just try to do that real quick, hold on. Right. Because it's a neat feature, so I wanna actually show it where you can say, thanks, Muhammad, for buying whatever, right? Right. Let's see if I got pro activated. Or... Okay, there we go. So when I click on this, I'm gonna say, I wanna actually use the user information. I click on the little, field here and I'm going to say I'm going to use their first name and I'm going to say thanks space and then afterwards I'm going to put an exclamation point and now watch what happens when I apply it <laughs> my, my username happens to be here Uncle Spence but <laughs> see how it dynamically says thanks Uncle Spence and here instead of this widget I'm going to put in the launch flows thank you widget thank you I just drag this in place here below which is now going to show what they just bought and if I want, I can put in some further instructions, you know, you know, thanks, blah, 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 do this and that. Okay, all customizable. Now, this call to action, I could turn into something like go to the my account area, right? So I might do my account as the page where somebody should be sent to. And I'm going to say, go to your account. Get rid of this extra widget, for example. And this is you, the store owner. Tada! <laughs> now I can also customize oh, so, the page. So, 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 a quick question: Can you actually customize the design and the feel of that, uh, that, that, that area? Yeah. Of this, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you've got all these choices when you're using Elementor widgets. So, for example, okay. if I don't want to show the dividers, you know, between each line, or if I want to not show the price and so forth. Now. Don't worry about the fact you can't see this. This is one of the things that is a secret of how launch flows is so efficient. This is outputting order details. On Elementor, there's no knowledge of what the order is because as you can imagine, there's no order that's happened yet. So we can't show the actual <laughs> details. So we just saw an approximation. But here's right. how you solve the problem. You go ahead and you go to the thank you page and you refresh it. And as the administrator, your last purchase will show up. Mm. So what I will do is I'll often put these two tabs side by side, and that way I can customize everything and see. For example, like if I wanted to change this to red and so forth, I can obviously just do it in line here and it shows up. But if I wanna change this, let's say for example, I wanna make, um, get rid of the dividers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or no, let's do something else, hide the order details or, uh, even better, hide the order price. Let me turn the price back on and hide the order total, right? So here we've got the total at the bottom. If I just update it here, I do have to switch to the other tab and refresh, but no big deal. You see, I, it's just like if I put these two tabs side by side in my window, I'd be good to go. But that's the one compromise for speed that Launch Flows does. Because remember I said, we choose not to hijack WooCommerce. We choose to just modify the output of WooCommerce, which means that we're 100% compatible, super lightweight, and don't get into the same problems that everybody else has. Here's a perfect example. 
if anybody is using affiliate WP, the most popular affiliate management for you know the entire WordPress ecosystem. Guess what? If you are interfering with the normal checkout and thank you pages, affiliate WP suffers as a result and you don't get an accurate count on all kinds of checkouts. We don't suffer that problem because the thank you page here and the output are all standard, okay? Plus it's very fast and lightweight. So one of the things that I could show you like we did on the other one is let me just stylize it slightly and I'll just put like, you know, a border or, you know, whatever it is, just because this is an obvious way to show what's going on here, right? All right, so I modify it a little bit. I show it here. I can see what my design is. And again, there's some plugins for Chrome that you can put in that let you update without you having to actually click the refresh. And I find that those are very useful when you do that side-by-side -side thing because you can actually see in real time your you know, updates happening in the other window. Okay, but the important part is now we've got a thank you page that works. So let's go back to our original product. And this original product was something that we had not said where it should go when we purchase. Let's now designate that it's going to our new thank you page called thanks, right? Mm -hmm. So we go back to the product, go to launch flows, and we're going to type thanks. And that way we know when you buy this product by whatever means, it's going to actually get you to the thank you. And now to prove how this works, let's copy this and we'll go to an incognito window. So we're starting from scratch. We throw the link to that particular checkout in, just like you would if we were, you know, going from a Facebook or some other kind of ad. Now, what happens is, you know, test buyer at test.com, test, test. This person now can immediately buy this. Or by the way, some people had asked, can I adjust the options of how many? Of course, because this area here, the order review, is unique to launch flows. Unlike even the other uh page builders, or sorry, the other uh, sales funnel stuff, when we use our particular method, we're essentially giving you full control. Let's go over here. We're giving you full control over the options to display and what uh, operations happen. So for example, I can customize in the widget all the things that show up here, right? Do I want to show the total and the tax and the subtotal and blah, blah, blah? Do I want to give people the ability to remove the product, right? With that special, you know, remove product links. That's that little option here, okay? So let's say I didn't wanna show taxes, right? No problem, just hide taxes, all right? And I'm gonna also, by way of example, hide the remove products link. So when I refresh the page, I've now got control over that component, not only where it's positioned, but also what shows up. Now, actually, the tax thing is a different one because this is the tax recurring. Um, but the idea is by being able to move it and adjust these things, I get a greater degree of control. Let's restore it to normal. And I can also customize, of course, the style of the various things. All right. But let's show what happens now as a mechanical thing. If we go back to our incognito window and we're going to finish this checkout, I've got it in the cart. It's obviously sort of like the same product. There's not an order bump. We'll do that next. And now I can check out, um, by the way, LaunchFlows also gives you the ability to auto save the person's info. So if in the future you want them to have one click checkout, we already have their credit card. So here in the payments uh, section or component, we're gonna auto save Stripe credit card. And now you'll see what happens is that we don't have to ask them in the actual checkout. So let's refresh the page. And you'll notice that now they can put in their credit card info. And they can do a checkout. Now, this may be a required field, so I got to fill this out. You know, yellow is my favorite color. Otherwise, it would give a notice. When they check out, this will take them to the custom thank you page that we just designated, and it will give the name of the buyer and the other dynamic info and so on and so forth. Now in doing so, we've got this really fun situation because remember I started this entire webinar by saying you can daisy chain. Well, instead of taking them to a thank you page, what if instead we wanted to take them to another product like a post checkout upsell offer? Super simple. Let's just go ahead and make a new page and we'll use, let's say the upsell widget, upsell 
offer. Now, again, we can use the actual uh, launch flow short codes for this. So if I went to my documentation, I could just go here. And I could see the component I need, which would be offered in that middle column. So I'd say upsell and downsell, and I just see how it works real quick. I, I made really simple to understand. And I even give you the short code here. I encourage everybody to watch the pop-up video. But by taking this syntax and I put this into the middle of a new page, even if that's all that I do, that would be enough to make this work. So we need a product. So let's get a different product to upsell. And we're gonna borrow something so I don't have to sit with the time that you have left. Um, let's uh, go to products. I just wanna show you what output happens. So let's pretend this is the actual upsell, 47933, all right? I go to my new page and I make the product ID. And again, this is way easier with Elementor, but I'm just showing it this way, 47933. And I'm not even gonna use any of the other parameters. I know you can set them up, but I'm just going to use these to show you what will happen is it will output an upsell offer on the page. And if I want with the template through Astra or otherwise, I can, you know, probably get rid of any of the extra stuff, right? Like I don't have to show the header, the footer, the title and so forth, but I'll just leave it in for the moment. Okay, so now let's take a look at what this looks like. And again, this is why any page builder will work. Oh. Guess what happened? Oxygen got in our way again. Oh, so sad. We have to fix that again with oxygen. So for the folks keep asking me why oxygen is making me crazy, it's because this is ridiculous. This shouldn't have to happen. In fact, I'm gonna turn off oxygen once and for all inside of the site because this is annoying me. And that's what should be annoying all of you. Like why does it inject itself into every single page no matter what? No other page builder does that. Elementor, Divi, you know, Beaver Builder, they all say, would you like to use us here? So I'm going to turn off oxygen and eliminate that problem. I think I answered, by the way, even though I said I'd do it at the end, I think I answered why is oxygen annoying, but also with that free soul plugin, how you can get rid of it. So let's disable it here. And then I can just show you the final example with the time we get left. And I'm, by the way, I'm not trying to disparage anything to do with the plugin or the authors. I'm simply saying when you work in the environment of WordPress, this is WordPress. How can you make a page editor, page builder where the core functionality interferes with what, with what is supposed to be happening? It doesn't make sense to me. So um, Let's choose one other thing. Let's make sure my syntax, by the way, is good. I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that from scratch because I have a feeling it might've gotten cached by, um, that's another thing Oxygen does is it caches the content. So let's get the product ID and let's do that again from scratch, sorry. So let's go and take what we were using. Um, let's do this one, 47345. And let's just make a new page, add new. And just for fun, we'll call this sell offer. I'm gonna edit this with Elementor this time. It would work just fine with the short code, but I'm gonna show you this since it's so fast and simple with Elementor anyway. Again, free or paid. Okay, so in here, cool idea. I love this. Use an existing stylistic template, right? And you just shove it right in. Like here, let's insert this one and pretend this is the product or something because that way, you know, you can do what you want. Um, I could just go ahead and add the link to the product for an upsell here, that's one way to do it. Or as I'll show you, I can start from scratch, I'll add a section in, and I will just use the launch flows upsell widget, drag the widget in place, and this is gonna be silly because there'll be two things on the same page, but now I paste in the ID 47345 and ta-da. <laughs> so, Either you use an existing really nice layout and just put the link to the product on that button like I've done before, or you use our actual upsell widget, put the ID in, and now you'll notice we have two things. We've automatically got our yes, I want it and our no thanks, and you can configure those with the ID of the no thanks or you know the actual product that's gonna be added will be added to the cart. And you can do things here, again, with the widget, like I don't wanna show the title, I don't wanna show the price because I'm gonna do that manually. Heck, I don't even want to show the picture. 
super easy. Like you just turn it off and that's that. Now you've just got the buttons. But if you were to use this by itself, my point was originally, let's say this is the page that we wanna send somebody to instead of the thank you. So I've sold the main product and now I wanna sell them an upsell. Cool, let's go ahead and say for that original product that instead of going to the thank you, we're gonna go to the upsell page instead. So we go back to the original product. And remember we had that option that said, what happens post checkout? Let's change it from the thanks page to the upsell that we just created. Okay, ta-da. Now when somebody buys this product and goes to the checkout, it will take them to our new upsell page and that will be the next thing that they do. And if they buy this, guess what? We can daisy chain this to another offer or we can take them to the actual thank you or we can redirect them to the actual content they purchased. Easy enough. Okay, because we're kind of short on time, let's do some questions. And I think I have a 10 o'clock call, but I might be able to hold off for a couple of minutes so we can squeeze in some questions. Otherwise, I'll definitely, you know, as always, I'll just follow up with um, answering the questions in the chat, right, from the actual right. event. Yeah, I think there's not a lot of questions. Just somebody said, uh, does this I mean, mean oxygen? Yeah, just. <laughs> I, I mean, I covered a lot of territory there. I mean, right. there's still. 800 million things you can do, but just the basics I want to emphasize. Did you see how stupid, simple, easy it is to use launch flows? Yeah. Just with the native editor or Elementor, and it costs you nothing. I 100% guarantee it's just as fast or faster than any other page builder. And if you have Oxygen, fine, disable it using that plugin, but please consider why not use Elementor natively and all, I mean, whatever or just mix them together because I don't want to displease anybody or criticize the actual oxygen builder. That's not my purpose, but it just frustrates me that, that they're not compliant in the way that Brizzy is. Right. So, but some people are saying, is there any way you can look into even doing any native integration, you know, taking a look at that probably just use that free soul plugin. That's free. Yeah. Good name for it. <laughs> and then you can just on those pages, Okay, make a sales page, put the header footer and put in the content for your checkout. Just don't use Oxygen for any of the WooCommerce stuff or any of the launch list stuff. And okay, fine. Use your other stuff. Right. right, right. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. Any, any other questions? That I guess that, that's the only one I see. Yeah. Uh, there was a question. Simon Rowe has a question. I was just, Simon, I've got your email. I apologize, but you're in the UK and I'm in Chicago and you emailed me when I was like sleeping and then I woke up and I'll take care of your thing today. He had a problem, Muhammad, that you can maybe help with the, uh, oh, you already eliminated. So yeah, just, yeah, that's some awesome. of the people had codes that for some reason either didn't work or they tried them once, then they refunded. Now they want to buy it back. Love that you're coming back. But mm -hmm. you need a new code, so Muhammad will help you. <laughs> okay, no problem. Can I just have one upsell for all of my products by default? Is there any way to do that? Absolutely. Yes. Let me explain real quickly because of this daisy chain. Mm -hmm. I personally like to create my products first mm -hmm. because the products have 90% of what you need in their DNA now, right? Mm -hmm. Do they go to the global checkout? Do they go to their own custom checkout? Do they use the global thank you or a custom thank you? Are they of their own sales pages? So you can just program the thing you have to make anyway, which is a product page, right? Okay, right. if you have a library of products, everything else is so simple because even though I didn't get a chance to demonstrate it, go in our docs to like the order bump, you know, uh, function, and you'll see an example step-by-step step, of how you can take a variable product or a variable subscription and have three or four choices on either a standalone page or daisy chain together, you know, page to page to page, or as part of a multi-step checkout. Like a lot of people said, can I do like Shopify where I have a tab that's super cool. And I first thing is in t the first tab, I go next and it goes to the second tab. I actually have shown that in the launch flows dem uh, demo, how you can build that kind of page with Elementor because Elementor already has the tabbed widgets in it. So you, put, you just put like the first product, the, the checkout components and so forth into the tabs. And then when you're done, Take them where else you know you want them to go. Right. So, so somebody's asking, um, what does next step do in launch flow options? Oh, next step is a really cool. I'll show you that real quick because this is something that 
is really helpful for anybody that has a lot of product SKUs. So mm -hmm. we built this specifically for one of our enterprise clients who has like eight jillion uh, <laughs> courses. I think that's legal term, eight jillion. <laughs> so what happened was they, I'll just do a simple checkout. They had a scenario where uh, they didn't want to make more than one thank you page. They wanted a global thank you page, right? And in doing so, we wanted an easy way for them to have a different where are you going to go to button based upon which product was bought. You follow my drift. Instead of like cart flows where, well, by the way, it's, it's very gratifying to me. Cardflow has actually added this feature to their product after I created it. So, I mean, I guess I must have been onto something. Uh -huh. When you have a thank you page, instead of making a million thank you pages, one in every single flow, which is what they had to do before, now you can have one global thank you and you can have a button here or a link. And by using the next step short code, the particular product can be programmed for where is this particular product going to take you if you have this short code associated with that link. So let's say I wanted in this case to go to a particular course because you just bought it, right? Mm -hmm. I can choose the course that this particular product associated with. And by putting this short code into, let's say, a button or a link like here, when somebody has bought that product, this link will go to that particular course. If they bought a different product, it would go to the other course. You see what I mean? Right. All right. So I do, unfortunately, I do have to run because I got somebody who's waiting for me in the Zoom call, but I want to let everybody know that I greatly, greatly appreciate all the intelligent questions. And I, as an example of how I operate, some two people said two things to me yesterday. One is that there was a, a bug, which was a bug. And the other person said, oh, I, I love your feature and I finally get how this works, but your labels aren't making sense. W the way I roll is I fixed the bug and I added the new modifications that same day and I released that the same day. Right. That's the difference between how I operate and other people operate. So like Jack Arturo at WP Fusion, you don't have to think about custom support because if you go to one of the other plugins, they're very responsive, but I guarantee you they're not doing that. They're just not. So I want everybody to understand. I love it when you come up with these great questions about does it work with this and does it work with that and will it break this? But I get frustrated a little when I see what other people are doing in the WordPress space if right. they're not following these standards because I'm driving down the highway minding my business expecting WooCommerce and the page to act a certain way. And then out of the blue comes a guy in reverse driving in my lane with his pickup truck. And I'm like, what the heck is happening here? <laughs> so I, I may sound aggravated, but I'm just sort of like perplexed. Good, excellent. Yeah, so right, thank good. you so much for your time. Really appreciate. And uh, if we need more time, we'll come up and, you know. We'll yeah. do another <laughs> session. I mean, right now, I will say this. I don't know what your deal is running for, but right. the number of people who are starting to use launch flows is extraordinary. And that's why I'm pleased with this deal because I decided to reduce the price 66 percent and then you reduced it another third for god's sake all right um this is a tool that will work with anything yes. so why not just have it for everything all the time i mean this is to me like the swiss army knife you should always have in your site or your client sites and you can afford to do so at 199 dollars for your offer my goodness that's plus that's you have no risk all right no risk excellent excellent thank you thank you appreciate. Look for the questions we'll follow up we'll see you on the next video okay see you soon bye bye guys